This mnemonic was made to help you prepare for the ABR core exam. The guideline based contrast agents are part of the non-interpretive skills part of the section, or NIS. And how do you memorize random information? In med school, we came up with stupid mnemonics, and this is exactly that. So hopefully this helps you remember these agents and what they are and their side effects, stuff like that. Here's a primer question. Which of these gadolinium-based contrast agents, or GBCA, has the highest risk of nephrogenic systemic fibrosis? And the answer is gadopentate. And after you memorize this mnemonic, you'll be able to answer that no problem. So this is a table that's in your study material, and some are labeled ionic, non-ionic, linear, and macrocyclic. And there's some footnotes there. And there's some additional sprinkled facts about some specific agents in that packet. And very difficult to all digest because there's so many of them. They all sound similar. Uh, hopefully this outline will help you memorize these things. So I came up with the St. GBCA High School mnemonic. And the first thing I did was took the trade name and gave it a nickname. And the reason why I focused on the trade name is because the brand name, like Gadavist, uh, it is different in different countries. So the ABR core exam is for US you know, radiologists, but I think there's a higher chance that the trade name will come up, but in reality, anything is fair game in that packet. So, ghetto pentate is penny, ghetto benate is benny, gadoxitate is ox, ghetto diamide is diane, ghetto pteridol is terry, ghetto terate is also terry, and ghetto butyrol is butthole. So from now on, just know these nicknames and you'll be able to translate into the trade name when you need to, to answer your questions. So here we go. Penny, Benny, and Diane are friends, but they are bullies. They're mean. These are the linear buddies. Penny, Benny, Diane are linear buddies. Penny and Diane are bad. They have the highest risk of nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. But the third one, Benny, there's still a risk of NSF, but the risk is lower. But there's more. He's a bad boy because he's part of that mean group. His exes will warn you, if you had prior bad experiences with bad boys, you want to avoid him. And this is alluding to the fact of the FDA warning, this agent, Benny, is contraindicated in patients who have had prior allergic-like contrast reaction to any gadolinium-based contrast media. Penny and Benny are hooking up. They're the ionic couples. They thought it was funny that their name rhymed. Helps you remember too. Diane, as a third wheel, is non-ionic. Penny, Benny are ionic couples. Diane is non-ionic. And Penny and Benny have a pet, like a lot of couples these days do. The pet is an ox. And since Benny and Penny are linear and ionic, the ox is also linear and ionic. We don't know much about the ox. It's probably a nice ox, which means there's probable low risk of NSF. One thing we know for sure though, and commonly tested, is if you run into an ox in the streets, you might get transient tachypnea. On the other hand, Terry keeps track of his macros. He's macro cyclic. He has a friend named also Terry. They both keep track of macros. The Terrys have a friend who also wants to get buff. They call him Butthole because it's high school. Why not? Butthole is okay with this nickname. They all keep track of macros. The macro friends are nice, unlike the linear buddies. There's limited evidence that they're associated with NSF. Terry Dole, so get a Terry Dole, and Butthole, get a Butyrol, are the other couple. They're the non ionic couple, unlike Benny and Penny, who are the ionic couples. Terry Dole and Butthole are non ionic couples. Terry 8, get a Terry Date, is ionic, because he's the third wheel. 
So that's it. That's the Saint GBC High School mnemonic. Just to go over, Penny and Benny and Diane are the linear buddies. They're mean, high chance of NSF. Penny and Benny are dating. They're couples, the ionic couples. The other couple is Butthole and Gato Terry Dole or Terry Ole, because their names rhyme. That are they are the nine ion couples. So the respective third wheels is the other thing. So Diane is non-ionic and Terry 8 is ionic. Benny and Penny, the linear ionic couples, have a pet ox. Pet ox is also linear ionic. It'll cause you transient tachypnea. Remember, Benny is a bad boy. There's an FDA warning. Prior experience, bad experience with gadolinium-based contrast agents. Benny is contraindicated. All right, let's go over some questions to help you solidify. Gadoxetate is known to cause which of the following adverse reaction? A, tachypnea, B, tachycardia, C, pulmonary fibrosis, and D, blurry vision. If you see an ox on the street, you might get transient tachypnea. Which of these gadolinium-based contrast agents is contraindicated in patients who have had prior allergic-like contrast reaction to any GBCA? And the answer is Benny. If you had a bad experience with a bad boy, you'll have a bad experience with Benny, the bad boy. Which of these GBCA has the highest risk of nephrogenic systemic fibrosis? So we're looking at the linear buddies who are bad, they're mean, including the, the, the bad girls, and also there's the Benny. But more than Benny, Diane has the highest risk of nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. Penny and Diane are bad. Which of these gadolinium-based contrast agents is macrocyclic? The Terry's and their friend Butthole keep track of macros, so of the answer choices is gadoterate, one of the Terry's. Which of these gadolinium-based contrast agents are non-ionic? So there's multiple answers. The third wheel of the linear buddies, Diane, and then the non-ionic couple, Teridol and Butthole. These are the non-ionic ones. Theoretically, which of these GBCA has the most stable configuration? This is a little extra and a second order question. Gadolinium needs to remain bounded to a chelate. If not, gadolinium by itself is toxic to the body. And in general, you might know that macrocyclic compounds is more stable than linear. So ionic is more stable than and non-ionic. So the answer is the macrocyclic ionic compound, gadoterate. In reality, this was demonstrated in vitro, but not really uh, proven in any way in humans. Last question, name all the linear gadolinium-based contrast agents and which are more likely to cause NSF. The linear buddies, the bullies, and the pet ox, they're the linear gadolinium-based contrast agents. And Penny and Diane have the highest risk of NSF. Also, a uh, point of many multiple choice questions. Alright, that's it. I hope you found this helpful and good luck with your test.